It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. In other words, every man, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you're uh, Caucasian, white skin, black skin, African American, uh, Indian or Asian or Hispanic, uh, no matter what, a Native American. And so you got all different varieties of mankind. So there's not just But one colors. blood. But they were all made of one blood. <laughs> one blood. I mean, if they weren't all made of one blood, then you'd have had to have, you know, Hispanic man die, Caucasian man die, black man die, African American man die, uh, Asian man die. No, no, one man, Jesus Christ, because right. one blood. So one blood made men of all nations, humanity of all nations. And so it only took one blood to redeem all men, and that's the blood of Christ. So our and so identity through faith is in his blood. skin deep. Uh, yeah, so your identi- identity cannot just be, uh, you can't find your identity in what the color of your skin. Or if you're freckled. Yeah, I got freckles, so <laughs> <laughs> who knows what that is. So, <laughs> so, so you can't. Get your identity from I'm, a, and if you fill out an application, you know, I'm a Caucasian, or I'm an Asian, you know, or I'm a uh, African American, or you know, uh, they have all kinds of terminology, you know, to try to identify what right. you are. Right. But you cannot get your identity from your skin because <laughs> you originally got your identity from your sin, <laughs> not from your Ooh, skin. That's good, huh? And so one man, Adam, got us in this mess. And so one man, Jesus Christ, how did he do that? Through the incarnation, God got in a body and the blood of Christ is the blood of God. It's divine blood. It's the blood of the new man. It's the blood of the new creature, the new creation. And so that blood carries redemption for all men. That's our identification in the blood. I mean, if you... You're gonna. Uh, you have a blood test, and that gives you your identification. Yeah, not in your skin. No. I mean, uh, if uh, if if you were dying, you know, and and uh, and you needed the blood transfusion, uh, you're not gonna say, uh, "Did that come from African American? Did that come from an Asian? Just give me Did some that come good from blood. Hispanic? I mean, after I take this blood, um, is it gonna like?" No, no it's the, you don't care where the blood comes from. That blood is what's necessary to save your life. life you don't care about the color of the, the skin where it came from. You just need the red. You need the blood. That's right. <laughs> and so, so the blood of Christ and through faith in, in blood. his blood, mm-hmm. that's a part of our identification mm-hmm. because the blood of one man contaminated the whole human race, which is the blood of Adam and sin. And that, that you were contaminated, it says in Ezekiel, in your blood. But God has given us a new blood, a new, blood. A new DNA, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. So through faith in his blood, and so what happened on the cross? Let's just say it this way. Um, when Jesus came, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jesus, you know, the incarnation, when he mm-hmm. was born, angels mm-hmm. are singing and wise men came and they're trying to figure out who is this baby? <laughs> well, he's God manifest in the flesh. And so Jesus uh, came and then you can see his, his lifestyle, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in his authority over right. Uh, sickness and disease and over right. Satan. And so they even ask in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what manner of man is this? Manner. And when John the Baptist saw Jesus for the first time, he knew who he was and yeah. he said, behold, the Lamb of God yeah. who takes away the sin yeah. of the world. He's identified him. Yeah. He was the lamb with that blood. He is the perfect sacrifice. That would be poured out for the sins of the world. His blood. And so Jesus, the lamb of God, and I think in the book of Revelation, he's referred to as still the lamb Lamb of of God. God. And so understanding what happened on the cross is Jesus became that one 
perfect lamb, that perfect sacrifice. Right. And so it's not the blood of goats and calves. Mm -mm. It's not the blood of any kind of animal, but it is the precious blood of Jesus. We are redeemed. And that's mm -hmm. without blemish and without spot. And mm -hmm. we are redeemed by that blood. So your identification with Christ. And uh, when the Old Testament, when they brought each family had to bring a lamb and that lamb had to be uh, flawless, had to be perfect. And so the priest would examine the lamb, the sacrifice. If the sacrifice was perfect, the worshiper was accepted based on the condition of the sacrifice. In other words, the priest mm -hmm. examined the sacrifice. So and if the sacrifice was perfect, then the worshiper was accepted to come by that perfect lamb. And so when you come to God and you come by faith in the blood of right. Jesus and you come by what God has done in Christ, then you say, here is the sacrifice. God examined what Jesus is, what he was, what he did and what happened from the cross to the throne. He said, that is the perfect sacrifice. Perfect and sacrifice. you are accepted based on the condition of that lamb which is Jesus. You know, remember Billy Graham? He used to have those crusades and just a powerful evangelist. And then he'd give his message and the invitation for people to come. Then he would stand back and pray and thousands would come to the front and they would sing that song, Just As I Am. Mm -hmm. Without one plea. Yeah, that was, that was his constant that song. that blood mm -hmm. was shed for me. O Lamb, o Lamb of, God. of God, I come. I come. And so it's you're coming come. to God based on the blood sacrifice of Jesus, that one man, one man. And so Romans chapter 5 says that death reigned by one man, Adam, through his disobedience. And now we have received the abundance of grace, yes. the gift of righteousness, and we reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ. So you really only have to have one man <laughs> to reign in life. One man. Everybody said, well, I need to know this man, that man. I got to have, especially if you're a single woman, I got to have a man. Well, you only have to have one man yeah. to enjoy life, reign in life. Right. And that one man is Jesus Christ and you are complete in him. Amen. You know, that just brings me back to the lady I met last week again. And the moment that she uh, decided to follow Jesus, you know, um, someone spoke to her and said, you know, the things that you're trusting in will not bring you life. And she was trusting in things that are in her thing, pocket. Things she you're holding on to. In her pocket, you know, she was in a new age and she was trusting in that to give her guidance and whatever she Comfort needed. Comfort in that. And they said, just let it go. And she took those out, and let him go. And she said, I'm not going to trust in that anymore. I'm going to trust in Jesus. Wow, the moment she did, her life was transformed because Jesus is alive. Jesus is real. And the moment we let go of everything else we're trusting in, yeah. put our trust in Jesus. Oh, Lamb of God, I come to you. That moment, wow, there's such a release from the old identity that we've been enslaved yeah. in and we embrace the identity of Christ mm -hmm. who is our life and in righteousness he gives us his love and acceptance yeah. he changes Approval. our identity yeah. so now in Matthew Mark Luke and John if you're reading the four gospels then uh, you will see Jesus dying Jesus buried Jesus raised mm -hmm. and so you'll study what happened the Via Dolorosa, what happened uh, while Jesus was beaten, what happened when he went to the cross, and you'll see what happened when he was raised from the dead. So you see things, or you see what man saw mm -hmm. in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. But if you come to Paul's revelation, that Paul actually calls himself a man in Christ. So if you come mm -hmm. to Paul's revelation, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So if you come to Paul's revelation, he shows you what happened in the unseen or what happened on the cross. Right. Not just what man saw, but what God saw. Mm -hmm. And he shows you what happened in the resurrection of Christ, not just what man saw, 
but what happened in the spirit or what happened unseen are to see what God saw, hmm. what happened in the spirit, and even see what the devil what saw. The devil so saw. what part of the gospel scares the devil is <laughs> the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so the sin of Christianity is the, the cross, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And so hmm. many religions offer lessons to try to fix man. But only Jesus Christ gives life, That's right. eternal life. So Jesus didn't come just to give lessons, even though the teaching is significant and very important. But Jesus didn't come just to give us lessons. Every religion offers lessons. Right. But Jesus came to die on the cross and to pour out his blood to redeem us from Satan and from sin and to set us free. Yeah. So there's something in Christianity that is totally different than every other what you would call religion. Because Christianity is not just a religion. Religion, of course, it's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what happened on the cross, and it says in Colossians, through the blood of his cross, Colossians 1, 20 mm -hmm. through 22. And he says, you are redeemed from your condition and set free from, uh, yeah. what does it say, your wicked works and your, your evil minds and mm -hmm. you're set free. And now through the blood of his cross, he presents you holy unblameable and unreprovable in the presence of God. Amen. You know, you just keep saying the blood of his cross, and that includes the cross, the burial, the resurrection, and the triumph. That's, <laughs> that's the whole act of God. But it began on the cross when Jesus was, was hung, his yeah. nails. Mm -hmm. The nails went through his hands yeah. and pinned him to the cross. Yeah. You know, he became a curse. The blood flowed mm -hmm. out of him. Yeah. And he died. He fulfilled yeah. every scripture that was prophesied about him yeah. on the cross. He fulfilled and, the law and the prophets. Yes. And the soldiers around, when that all happened and it thundered, you know, <laughs> the lightning said, my God, <laughs> the you know, earth in your hands. My God, why have you forsaken And then uh, they said, surely this yes. must have been the Son, Son of God. God. Yeah. They had a moment of revelation yeah. that that was the death of an old creation. Yeah, this was the Son of God. And so Jesus, the Messiah, hmm. in Christ, in the Anointed One, what God did in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by your past mm -hmm. or by sin mm -hmm. or by Adam's fall. What God did in Christ where sin abounded, Grace did much more abound. Oh, yeah. And so you have to literally find yourself or see yourself in Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, on the cross, it's a perfect picture of the love of God, yeah. the wisdom of God, and the righteousness of God, and the power of God. Yeah. What happened from the cross to the throne is the love of God, the wisdom of God, the righteousness of God, and the power of God. Mm. And so God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. Every man. Aha, uh -huh, you should write that down. <laughs> God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. Yeah. So if any man <clears throat> be in Christ, he is a new creature, that old things have passed, passed away. away. Behold, everything has, has become, become new. Yeah. So Jesus changes everything yeah. because what happened on the cross embraced everything that Satan did in Adam, sin and death and the curse and sickness and disease. God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. So your identification with Christ actually on the cross is where Jesus took our identical condition. Mm -hmm. And Paul says, we were there. Mm -hmm. Paul says, I was there. Mm -hmm. So go back to Galatians 2.20 real quickly here where Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. So just take that for a minute because I know other translations say different things. But just start with I am. I am. I am. In other words, I am. my identity, mm -hmm. who I am, Mm -hmm. is determined by what happened in Christ on the cross. Mm -hmm. In other words, this has determined my identity. I'm not 
what the past made me. I'm not what my failures made me. I'm not what my parents made me. Right. I am now identified with Christ. I am the workmanship of God created in Christ. So I am, Paul says, this is who I am, crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with I Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I, I live, live, yet not I. Not not your old identity. My, not my old identity. Yeah. Not yet, not I. But Christ lives in me. Wow. He has made me an unusual. I mean, I I use this terminology some time ago at a meeting uh, because um, people have all these different kinds of dogs, you know. And so when we grew up, <laughs> when we grew up, our kids have all kind of dogs. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, I forget all the names of them, but <laughs> nowadays they come up with all these different combinations. Yeah. When I grew up, we were just happy to have. We had Labrador, you know, uh, Labrador. We which had is a German smart dog. Shepherd. You had a German yeah. Shepherd, and so uh, we were at these people's house, friends of ours in Georgia, and they they have what they call Labradoodles. Well, what they is a Labradoodle? Them. I mean, that's it's like a, a Labrador with a poodle, <laughs> right? And so they come up with a new breed called a Labradoodle, all right? So what God did in Christ is now he has come up with a new kind <laughs> of human that never existed before. So what are we going to call this new kind of human? A new creation. A new in creation. other words, you're not, you're not fully Labrador. You're not fully Putin. You're not, you're not fully God. You're not fully human. But what are you? You are a God man. A God man. A Christian. You're a Christian. You're a, a Christ Christian. person. Yes. Made after the pattern of Jesus Christ. Wow. What produced this new breed? what God did in Christ, a new kind of human mm -hmm. that never existed before. How did that happen? My goodness. I think it started one of those uh, views that we have. You said love, mm -hmm. the love of God. And I think our favorite verse in the Bible about the love of God is John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. Whoever believes in, one translation says, believes into him, yeah. has everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Then it says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, mm -hmm. but that the world through him yeah. might be saved. And then uh, Paul sees that revelation in, in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 19. He said, it was God personally present, the Amplified says, in Christ, yeah. he was reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up and mm. holding against men yeah. their trespasses, but canceling them yeah. and committing to us the message of reconciliation, restoration to favor. Wow. And so God in Christ is not against you, but he is, he's done the work of wow. forgiveness yeah. and of loving us into to yeah. himself, it was, uh, one translation says, yeah. God was personally present in Christ, hugging the world to himself. Yeah, I like that, <laughs> I like that. And so in the, him there's change. Yeah, and so in Christ, the love of God mm -hmm. is clear that while we were yet sinners, Christ, Christ died, died for us. us. Yes. And so the love of God, so sometimes even though people don't understand the full uh, theological implications, but when you see Jesus on the cross dying, he is an innocent man. He had no sin of his own, and yet he took our sin. He took our condition. He took our curse. And when you see what happened on the cross, no one ever cared for you like Jesus. Mm -hmm. In other words, his love, God's Love. So it's a great picture of the love of God and the love of Christ. You said those words when he was on the cross. And so that reminds us of a song yeah. you always love to hear. Yeah. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Yeah. Now, Brother, Brother Copeland sings that song very excellent. I, I, love, I love hearing him sing that yeah. song. Uh, it says, <clears throat> he knew me, yet he loved me. Yet he me. loved me, yeah. And, and wow. many, many people sing that song, but it's such a powerful song. And Brother Copeland, I think it must be one of his favorites. Uh, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. So uh, that day, you know, Jesus was on the cross. 
then people just saw him there and saw a thief on either side. Jesus looked out at the crowd. People holler and crucify him, you know, and, and uh, all the things that happened there. His mother was there. The disciples were there seeing him hang on the cross. So what, but what happened there, the full significance mm. of what happened on the cross is seen in the Apostle Paul's revelation. Mm -hmm. That terminology in Christ or in union with Christ or when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, 1 Corinthians six seventeen says, he that is joined to Christ mm, becomes that. one yeah. spirit. So 1 Corinthians six seventeen says, mm -hmm. when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you are engrafted into Christ, joined mm -hmm. to him and you become one spirit, or you could say one identical spirit, or you could say the same spirit, the same life, the same righteousness, the same authority that's in Christ now belongs to every believer. <laughs> the, uh, you said engrafted, 2 Corinthians five seventeen. you like this one. Therefore, if any, man, any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, yeah. a new creature altogether. The old previous yeah. moral and spiritual condition has yeah. passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. Tell us about engrafted. To be uh, engrafted yeah. is what the Amplified says. And so Paul uses that terminology about the Gentiles being engrafted in mm -hmm. to the family of God and God making one new human, one new <laughs> humanity. So how we got engrafted is through the cross. If you just look at the dictionary, it says there is no grafting without wounding. Hmm. In other words, you're going to graft a branch and, and, and the stock together. Then you have to make a cut, a slice cut, a notch cut, and then you put the two together, wrap them up, and they become one. Why do you want to do that? And so What's you want to change the DNA or the fruit and you are, you want to make it a stronger kind of a plant. Mm. So you engraft it. Two and, different ones. Yeah, the notch two together, different ones, notch together, together, and they grow together. And they become a new species. One, yeah. And so it's very interesting. Wow. And so now the same thing with our grandson, Dylan. Uh, uh, he was, he was, uh, had leukemia and was, the doctors gave him no hope unless the uh, bone marrow transplant. And so he got a stem cell transplant from his brother, Gavin, and that's his stem cells were engrafted into Dylan. <clears throat> and there came a time when the doctor says, now Dylan is 100% Gavin. What did that mean? Uh, that means that what the doctor said to Dylan okay. before the engrafting process, right. uh, the, the stem cells is, Mr. Dylan, we're getting ready to say goodbye to you. <laughs> In other words, you'll never be the same person after this. So that, that now Dylan, his brother, he received his older brother Gavin's stem cells, and now they said uh, he's got a new DNA so that if D uh, Gavin had committed a crime, Dylan could be convicted for it. Because they have the same Ooh, identical DNA. That's incredible. Now, just think about that. Cause, and imagine who the donor is. The donor was Gavin. Mm -hmm. And so now he's got the same identical DNA as mm -hmm. Gavin. Mm -hmm. So what God did in Christ, well, Mark, now the doctor wasn't the first one to think of that. Yeah, God so you don't look at Dylan Christ. and say, now, because that's been a year ago, and those leukemia cells are not in his body. Yeah. And so we don't look at Dylan now and say, there's a leukemia child or a child with leukemia. No, we don't say that because it's, he's got a completely mm. new identity. identity. No, that is a healed little boy. That's a healthy child, yeah. just like Gavin. Yeah, so he was, was healed yeah. by a, engrafting a bone marrow transplant. He was healed yeah. by a new identity. Oh, that's so good. So he got a new identity from his brother. So he, you'd still call him Dylan, but really he's got Gavin's DNA. Yeah. So you may look like the same person on the outside, but when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, the very blood of Christ cleanses us, and yet that blood continually now flows in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you said continually flows in us. That's The blood is your identity, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So his identity continually flows in us. Yeah. So whatever we're facing, yeah. 
We meet challenges. Yeah. We don't meet it as, oh, I'm just so-and-so. No, I meet it as a new creature in Christ. Yeah. I have the identity. How would Jesus yeah. speak to this situation? Yeah, so the same identical life that is in Christ right. is now in the believer. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Have you ever struggled to find your identity and God's purpose for your life? Many people identify with their race or nationality. Some identify with their careers. Others pick a sports figure or celebrity. Some people even identify themselves with their past. Many people live and die and never really find their true identity. When we see what God has done for us in Christ, the reality of redemption will swallow up all our former identities. In this brand new CD set, The In Christ Identity, Mark Hankins teaches four brand new messages on finding out your true identity in Christ. God is planting a whole new crop of righteousness, wisdom, redemption, sanctification, blessing, joy, and victory on the inside of you. Put on the new man by declaring who you are in Christ. Learn your true identity with the book, Taking Your Place in Christ. You have a supernatural identity. Your gift of any amount will help Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Order today by calling 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Take your place in Christ today. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today as my parents have been talking about taking your place in Christ. What a life-changing revelation when you find out who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, what you can do through Christ. So this is a powerful, powerful message. We will send you this book, Taking Your Place in Christ, for your gift of any amount. That's how much we believe in the message. That's how much we want to make sure it gets to you. So your gift of any amount will send you this book. And also your partnership with Mark Hankins Ministry is making a difference. Your partnership helps my parents go all over the world, preach and teach this message of who you are in Christ. And this is empowering believers. It's transforming lives. So this message, we want to make sure it gets as far and as wide as it can. Because of your donations, we're also able to translate the books into many, many various languages. This book alone is translated into Spanish, Vietnamese, Arabic, so it is making a difference all around the world. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for believing in this message. Thank you for partnering with us. It is making a difference. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Thank you for joining us today and have a great day. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Thank you for watching.